All right, so we had this uh, radiator tested and there was a tube to header crack at the top that I had known about, but I guess they said that there was another one down at the bottom as well. And uh, one of the tanks they believe is starting to develop a crack in it as well. So we opted to get a new aftermarket radiator. Um, it was significantly cheaper than the dealer version. Um, here's the part number. Uh, replacement part for Radiator International 7400 to 7500, 08 to 14. And uh, yeah, so that's the part number on that. People that make it, in case you're looking for one. Um, so I just gotta change over the fittings and stuff that go with it. This one comes with a cooler line built into it. Uh, that one does not have a cooler line. So I'm just going to block off the ports and, uh, and uh, use this radiator. So you get the radiator, you get the foam pieces, you get the little know, rubber insulators. You get a, an assortment of uh, pieces. I don't think I'm going to use too many of these, but I like this because this is better than that other fitting that was on there. So just a better, better drain, if you ask me. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to get this swapped over into the frame. Um, I'm going to assemble the whole thing with the shroud and everything on it to put it back in. I think it'll be easier than the way I disassembled it. Um, but uh, we'll see. Uh, so, there was the six bolts in each corner. Two, three in the front, three in the back. On each corner and the top. And then these side pieces separate as well. There's uh, three bolts here. So one, two, three. Uh, actually four. And then the, the side section separates. So basically, the first thing I do is I'll take those apart. Wrap those around the radiator. Because I got to go around the uh, the inlet and outlet, and then um, then we'll come over here and set it into the bottom, and then obviously bolt the bottom corners, and then we'll put the put the top piece on, and then uh, I put the shroud on, and then we'll stick it in. But let me show you. See the little rubber pieces that come through the frame those uh those are the two bolts that hold the, the bottom down the bottom is kind of heavy i mean it probably weighs i don't know 25 pounds maybe i mean i guess that's not really that heavy but if you add that to the radiator to the side supports to the top support and then the shroud it, it starts getting to be kind of kind of weighty um i would say the bottom probably weighs as much as the sides and the top did together so Anyway, let's uh, start getting this put together. So, pull the old rubber insulators out. I put the new ones in. Uh, they got a little groove in them. The little groove goes towards the inside. And uh, I think that's for the fins to go through or to drain or something. But 
that's how I got that oriented. That's how they came out, so that's how I'm putting them in. I'm not going to tighten the side pieces until I get them in and the frame together. I don't tighten up the side pieces because they do expand and contract a little bit. So that's what I'm doing with them. I'm just putting them snug so it's on there. And then I'll bolt it all in and then I'll tighten the side pieces. So these side sections go inside the bottom track. Is that? Let's put some screws in it. Alright, I'll have to get some plugs later because those are actually pretty big plugs and I don't think I have that size. So, I'm going to change out the little rubber insulators on the top and then put the top piece on. Now, I left all the stuff semi loose. I just got all the bolts in so we can kind of line everything up and we got some movement.
same way as the bottom, these side pieces go inside the top channel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to support this up a little bit. I'm going to try to get the shroud on before I tighten everything down. That way I know it's not racked side to side. And then, um, then we'll, we'll tighten the, these bolts that pull the sides out. And then we'll tighten the bolts along the side. So, um, so nothing's kind of pulling against anything else. All right, what is that? There is a tightening device. Oh, there it is. It was right out of my feet.
So that's Titan. So uh, I'm gonna take a wrench and I'm gonna check these all by hand to make sure they're tight. I'm not very good with just hammering them with a gun and saying it's good. I like to actually check, make sure everything's tight. So I'm gonna check all them and then uh, they're ready to put it back in the truck. So, here we go, we're in there. Uh, just gotta get the two bolts on the bottom, kind of line it up where it needs to be. I think it's tipped back a little bit, so I probably gotta shove it in, but that will be able to get that no problem. And then we'll, once I get that, we'll start putting this stuff back together. All right, so I got the uh, radiator bolted down. I put the expansion bottle, or coolant bottle tank whatever you want to call it back on was the three bolts on top and then the two nuts and the bolt here um, I bolted this on and I forgot that I need it off because the air conditioning lines come through here so I got to be able to get that around the air conditioner so I had to take that back off um, so over here uh, I think all I did was I just put this back up it's the two bolts there the two bolts on the washer bottle and uh yeah so an upright up there in the middle where the hose is there's two clamps up there and i got this clamp here once i put that first radiator on i'll put this back on and i got a zip tie cut there um i think there was another one too i'll find it and uh yeah Oh, I put the put the uh, drain in. I like those drains better than what was on there. I I don't know why that was on there. I think that was they probably fill it from the factory with those, and it's just something they just hook up, put a vacuum on it, hook up the coolant to the bottom there, and it just fills. That's what I imagine. Or maybe they do. Maybe they they evacuate it or put it under vacuum and do everything from that port, and it's just faster for them. I don't know, but I took it. I didn't put it on. So, plus, um, I don't know if it's just working on the radiator or just working on the cooling system in general. But I do know that if you change your EGR cooler, you have to vacuum fill these. So, I think with that 
thing on there, I don't think I would have been able to put under a vacuum. I believe it probably would have opened itself because that little center section, I believe, goes in. So when I put it on a vacuum, it probably would have opened and sucked a bunch of air in. So I don't know if I'd really use that anyway. Um, so, yeah, I'm just looking at poses and stuff. Uh, I think I'll put the intercooler on next. And uh, then the little radiator. Or maybe I'll do the little radiator first because that's how I took it off. Not that it really matters, but... I don't know. I guess it doesn't matter. Either or. So there's a stud up here, so I just hooked it on the stud and it hangs on it. And we'll get the other, the other three bolts in. And I put that bracket down here in. It's weird. It's got kind of a bend in it. This is the truck we had to put all the springs in. So we were thinking that. It got twisted so bad that it actually is what cracked the radiator and it kind of makes sense because down here there's a like a bow in it so I bet when it was bolted in it was just twisting so bad it kind of racked the whole thing oh, it looks like right there there's kind of a bend I don't know maybe not there it's just an optical illusion but so there's a four nut up here, three bolts, put the bracket back on. Uh, I put the other radiator in already, just gotta hook the hoses up. Uh, so once these are bolted in, put the, uh, the air conditioning condenser back on, the nuts on uh, the brackets, and uh, I can put this flat back on. And uh, the grill, and then we should be done with the front part. And then we can finish hooking up the hoses back here. So, just flop condenser back in. Gonna make sure you get this up out of the way so it can go through there. You got those two nuts that hold this tight. Hold the lines on. Uh, just put the nuts on the top ones. 
Uh, the bottom one holds the grill also. So you gotta put the nuts on after you put the grill on. And then the two T40 bolts up on top, the top of the grill. And then, uh, and then the front of that should be all done. I just gotta finish with the hoses. That on, and then take tubes, and uh, I gotta get some hose clamps for this. Then we should be all back together, and the bolts for this thing here. So. I used to be a lot better about remembering where I put all the nuts and bolts and hardware and stuff down. I, mean, I could take some apart and put it back together. Weeks later, I remember where everything was. Now, oh, I'm starting to lose my memory. I mean, well, all the bolts are pretty much the same in this, so it's not like anything's different, so. Except for some are longer than others. Other than that, I guess it's alright. I get it in the end, but I guess it's just old age sneaking up on me. Not that I'm that old, I just it's starting, that's all I can say. So we got one of our back hose apparently is blowing a fuse for the ride control. So I'll have to trace that down. I don't know if it's going to be solenoid or uh, I gotta see how it's designed. Might just be a wire rub through. It's not it's blowing a 20 amp fuse but it's not like it's blowing it immediately it's taking like a second so not that that makes a big difference but it's obviously not a dead short it's kind of like a slow one 
know. But. So, we got a little flippy flapper on. We got a grill on. All the uh, doodads over there. So, I gotta put the intake hoses on. And, uh, and the fenders. And uh, I believe we'll be pretty much done. A couple zip ties and stuff, and then we can fill it up with coolant. Alright, so I got that truck all back together. Uh, so I'm going to fill this with uh, this airlift gauge. So, or airlift filler. Um, so it's got these different rubber section pieces. Uh, this is an adapter section. And basically you just turn this clockwise and it expands and fits the neck. Uh, so this one came with quite a few of them. I think there was like four of these. And uh, like a universal one. And it's got this hose with a little screen on it and like an on-off shutoff. That goes into this section here. And then you get this little vacuum venturi, whatever it is. Um, and you put air to this. And plug it into there and it, it'll pull a vacuum on the system so take a read your instructions you need minimum shop air 90 psi um, best results radiator should be empty heater control should be set to the heat position um, so use the appropriate adapter make sure it fits snugly in the opening of the filler uh, seal the neck, the radiator neck adapter, tighten the knurled knob by turning it clockwise until snug. Do not hold radiator neck adapter by the vacuum gauge. Connect a Venturi assembly to the radiator neck adapter. Make sure the ball valve is open, which is this into this. Connect shop air to the Venturi assembly. Alright, so... The next shop air to the Venturi assembly, you'll begin to hear a hissing sound and the vacuum gauge will begin rising. If coolant system is not empty, Venturi hose may spit out some coolant, thus reducing efficiency. Um, allow the system to reach 24 to 26 inches on gauge reading. This will take less than a minute, apparently. Radiator hoses may start to collapse. This is normal due to vacuum. Some radiator overflow hoses may need to be clamped off to obtain vacuum. When gauge reaches the desired 24 to 26 inches of vacuum, close ball valve, disconnect air supply, and venturi assembly from radiator neck adapter. After 20 seconds, gauge should not move, indicating cooling system has no leak. Connect the refill hose to the radiator adapter. Place the screen end in the coolant supply of your choice. Open the ball valve and coolant will start to fill the vehicle cooling system cooling system is full when the vacuum gauge reaches zero. Remove radiator neck adapter from radiator by turning knob counterclockwise. Overflow tanks should be filled to proper level. Always allow cooling system to warm up before attaching radiator cap. Top, top up cooling system if necessary. All right, so let's go and do that. And so, Get that in there. So I got one that fits snugly. See if I can prop you up here. So we'll tighten this. It doesn't have to be super tight because if it's got a vacuum, it's going to be sucking itself in. So put a little adapter on. We'll hook an air hose up to it.
This is a 26, so we'll grab the other fill part and I uh, get some coolant. All right, so we got the other hose hooked up. It's got a pretty fine screen on it, so if you drain stuff into a bucket, you ought to be able to get it back in pretty easy. So it's been a little bit, and we're still at 26, if you can see that through the sticker, and uh. So I'm pretty sure we ain't got any leaks. So let's go ahead and start filling this. So I got two and a half gallons or two gallons, whatever it is in here. I'm gonna put whatever it takes or before I start sucking air because once you start sucking air, you lose the ability to get more coolant. And then I'm going to fill it up again and we'll just keep going until it's full. Uh, it should take about seven gallons, six or seven gallons or something. So. so what do we put? We put two gallons in and we're still at 20, 23, 24 inches of vacuum. So we'll uh, keep going. See a little bit of a fluctuation. Oh. It's so fast that fills. You could probably go right out of the containers if you want. I'm using the clear containers just because I can see when the level gets down and then I won't suck a bunch of air in. There you go. I think it's down to 21 inches. Another two gallons gone. So I'm gonna finish filling this up. And uh, yeah, I mean, we'll take it back off and we'll pressure test it. Um, I don't think we're gonna have any problems just based on the fact uh, that it held the vacuum. 
and you can still see that these these hoses are still collapsed up here so we still obviously got a ways to go um i gotta put the fender back on so i won't continue to bore you with uh any more of reassembling this uh if i have any any problems or something that needs attention i'll let you know but other than that i'm pretty sure that this is going to be the uh the end of the repair so i uh, hope that can help somebody if not let me do it let me know what i did wrong and i thank you for watching